Maybe see it. Well, we are continuing today in our study on summer promises of God. We started off this series on summer promises by looking at an overview of the promises of God. We've seen the promise of eternal life. We've seen promise of answered prayer. And last week, the promise of no fear. And today there is one word that might be considered one of the opposites of fear. And if you've seen in the kind of the theme in our songs today, what would you say that opposite of fear might be that we're looking at today? Peace. 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 Exactly. You know, I think that when we look at peace, sometimes we get a little bit, a, uh, we misconstrue it, I guess would be one way to put it. We, we think that that peace is something we can get from stuff that's going on around us, where in the act, actuality, the peace that God gives to us is greater than any anxiety, any stress, anything that the old devil or even just life can bring into our lives. And God wants to bring to us perfect peace. Remember last week? You know, our love for Daytona. And if uh, right about now, I, if we were inside, I'd be showing you some vacation pictures. <laughs> when I am sitting down there at the beach and having those waves that come on up over my feet, there's such peace when we look out our living room sliding doors or the bedroom sliding doors and see the ocean there. Such a wonderful feeling of peace. But that's vacation. <laughs> Can we, is it possible? To have peace in the midst of trials and stresses and turmoil. Now, in order to get us ready to talk about this whole subject this morning, let's take an inventory to find out how peaceful we really are. And here's some answers that you can give. Either seldom, never, frequently, or constantly. Okay, think about those. As I ask the questions, never, seldom, frequently, or constantly. How often do you worry? Don't have to answer out loud. <laughs> How often are you at peace with other people? Or vice versa. How often do people feel like you are at peace with each other? How often are you at peace in the midst of troubles and stresses and anxieties? Turn your Bibles this morning to Isaiah chapter 26. Is it possible to have peace when we're going through problems? Can we experience shalom in times of sorrow and sickness and sadness and, and even in differences of opinion that may happen in some of our lives from time to time? So often we say, man, if I could only get some peace and rest. It's kind of like it's some sort of destination or something that's out there. But in actuality, it is not out there, but it's what is happening in here. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is the presence of the Prince of Peace internally. Peace can be experienced in the midst of whatever mess you find yourself in when you are working with difficult people, difficult circumstances, disturbing problems that may be coming in your life. Now, depending on whatever translation of the Bible that you have, that word peace is mentioned in the Bible anywhere from, listen to this, anywhere from 380 times to 450 times. Is peace in your life important to God? 450 times important! Yep. And our promise today is found in a review from last week. We took that, looked at Isaiah 26.3 last week. And that's our scripture for today, Isaiah 26.3. Lots of people throughout the centuries have kind of locked into this verse because the peace that comes from God... You will keep him 
in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Now, as I said last week, not trusting God enough to have no fear is like telling God that he doesn't understand it or that he can't do it. And the first part of Isaiah 26.3 gives us an unbelievable, fantastic promise. You will keep him in perfect peace. Now that word keep means to maintain, to protect. It's a military term, believe it or not. A military term means to protect the camp or the fort. The enemy is unable to get in when God's peace is protecting us. Psalms 85, 85, 8. He promises peace to his people. Psalms 29, 11. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Now that word perfect peace is literally shalom, shalom in Hebrew. With Isaiah's use of colorful language and vivid imagery, it's almost striking that he doesn't necessarily use the English translation of a, an adjective to describe peace. He just simply repeats, shalom, shalom. And what we see in Scripture is that, in fact, that Spurgeon, by the way, says that God does nothing by halves but everything by doubles. And when a word is repeated in Scripture, it's kind of like God is putting an exclamation point on there. It's kind of like next uh, February 13th when we hear about the Super Super Bowl champions, the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> that was right. Thank you. <laughs> Shalom. Shalom actually means a whole lot of stuff. We've studied, we've studied Shalom in the past. And it means completion and fulfillment and refers to restoring a state of, of wholeness and unity and a restored relationship. Now, in my experience, I find that a lot of people don't experience the peace that God has for us because they're looking for it in the wrong places. Peace is not found in pleasant circumstances or in people or having a lot of possessions. Peace is internal. It is not external and it can only come. True peace, lasting peace, can only come from a God who is peace, peace. In 2 Thessalonians 3.16, and now, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. As we've learned in our Summer Promise series, there are some promises that they have some conditions to them. For them to have uh, conditions that need to be met in order for God to be able to follow through with them. Certain conditions in Isaiah 26, 3. There's several of them here. God keeps us in perfect peace, number one, when we keep our minds stayed on him. A double dose of peace comes to us when we are willing to accept the fact and acknowledge the fact that God will never leave us or forsake us. Now, we all say, yeah, I know, I believe that. <laughs> But yeah. do you live that way? You know, if Becky was with me 24 hours a day, walking beside me, walking with me, walking hand in hand with me, would I ever not be aware of her presence? No. God is there 24-7. Yeah. And so often we find ourselves, like you know, like I said last week when I was out on that second sandbar and wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get back again. I, and I said, I, I hope I prayed. I think I prayed. Knowing me, I, I probably did, but I don't remember praying before getting back. Uh, but that's because so often as humans we forget that God is there with us. 
We need to put our minds to the place that our minds are continually stayed upon God, that we know that God's presence is with us no matter what is going on in our lives. It's a mindset. And it is time to claim God's promises instead of focusing on the problems. I love the words of that first song we sang, Like a River Glorious, stayed upon Jehovah. Hearts are fully blessed because he promises, as he gives us, perfect peace and rest. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything. anything. You know, uh, there's a very helpful corrective there. Do not be anxious about anything. And it's, it's very helpful for, and I'm going to go ahead and say what I think may be one of the number one sins in Christians today. And that is anxious worry. If I've said it ten times, I've literally said it a thousand times. If it's not going to affect you 150 years from now, then why let it affect you now? Someone has said that there are more people addicted to anxiety than all other addictions combined. Amen. Yeah, people can be addicted to anxiousness. There's a certain feeling that happens in here that is the same feeling as when you get excited about something. Or anything else that starts those, uh, what is Hormones. not pheromones, uh, whatever. Endorphins. Endorphins, that's the one, thank yeah. you. <laughs> it's the same thing, and we can get addicted to anything that, those endor that brings up those endorphins, including anxiety. Yeah. And there are people that are addicted to anxiety. <clears throat> the word anxious means that which divides, distracts the mind, which draws a troubled person in different directions. There's a lot of that going on today, isn't there? Amen. Friends, worry is wasting today's time to clutter up tomorrow's opportunities with yesterday's troubles. Let me say that again. Worry is wasting today's time to clutter up tomorrow's opportunities with yesterday's troubles. Some years ago, there was a professor at an American university that did a study on what people worry about. 40% never happens, 30% concerns the past, 12% are needless worries about health because it doesn't happen. I think that, that was a few years back, that number would skyrocket today. 10% are about petty issues, and only 8% are legitimate concerns, which means that 92% of our time that is wasted on worrying is wasted. And not only that, but the Bible says we're not supposed to worry about the other 8% either, doesn't it? Why? Because when we worry, what we are really saying is that God doesn't take care of us. God does not know what's going on in my life. And, you know, maybe God's problems are bigger than my problems. All right, Mossman said that worry is practical atheism, and it is an affront to God. Isn't that powerful? Worry is practical atheism, and it is an affront to God. Some people in the sound of my voice this morning may be needing to say ouch to that one. One pastor writes, worry is the warning light that God is not really first in my life at this time, at this particular moment, because worry says that God is not big enough to handle my problems. <laughs> Jesus doesn't want us to be saturated with stress. In Luke 21, 34, he says, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down. You know, again, imagine yourself on the hillside and Jesus himself is talking to you. And listen to Jesus as he says, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, the anxiety of life or work or out and about. Worry. 
You know, worry can, can weigh us down like, like an anchor. It can cause us to sink spiritually. Stress can strangle us. Anybody ever feel like you're, you're being strangled by stress at times in the past? I know I have. Some of us are stressed simply because we allow our minds to focus on things that bring us down. Rather than on the God that is walking with us. We focus on what we hear. Many times from ungodly oriented dispositions and non-proven accusations and statements. Wrong thinking leads to wrong feelings which can then lead to wrong living. And conversely, right thinking can lead us to right living. What we put into our minds determines what comes out in our attitudes and in our actions. What do you listen to? Who do you listen to when you watch the news on TV? What we believe determines what comes out. Warren Worsby once offered a saying, and he said, sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Sow a character, reap a destiny. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And as a result, so many people find it hard to be, to be joyful and peaceful because our thoughts are centered on things that are not necessarily from God and then those thoughts control our behavior. <coughs> Philippians 4 it provides a wonderful filter for us to try to get through this, to keep in the, the good stuff and keep the bad out. Philippians 4 8 says, <coughs> finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, whatever is praiseworthy, think on these things. <coughs> you know, go back to Philippians 4 8 and read it and reread it and try to memorize it a little bit there. And try to train your mind to be thinking about these kinds of things rather than that which may come into your life and try to make you worried about stuff. It means to, you know, when Paul says that we are to think on these things, what he means is a translated to continuously ponder them in a detailed and in a logical manner. God has packed a lot of good into our world. He really has, hasn't he? And we need to focus on that which is praiseworthy. Be very careful on what you think about and how you allow God to lead you. Think about God and uh, let your mind be continually stayed upon Him rather than on other stuff. We also need to keep our wills willing. You'll keep Him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because He trusts in you. And to trust means to fully lean on someone or to rely upon them. The God of peace will protect us. And once we trust God with our trials and we present our requests to Him, we find that God will, uh, His peace will come flooding into our lives. Philippians 4 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That peace that transcends all understanding means that it goes beyond anything that we can ever or imagine. It excels, it surpasses anything that we can ever even hope for. In fact, we can't even put it into words because it is peace. Peace. In verse 9, the God of peace will be with you. In what area do you need God's Let's keep our minds mindful, our wills willing, which leads us to the third condition. God will keep us in, in perfect peace because he is a covenant-keeping God, kind of the theme of our whole series here this, this year, this summer. We can rely upon God because he is indeed a covenant-keeping God, and the only way to find true peace is to rely upon the Rock of Ages, whose name is Jehovah, Jehovah, 
God will keep those in perfect peace when we keep our minds mindful on Him, when we keep our wills willing to trust in Him, when we keep our lives living for Him, and knowing in trust that He will continue to work. John 14, 27, Jesus, imagine Jesus talking to you. Jesus says this. He says, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives you, do I give to you. Don't let your hearts be troubled. And don't let them be afraid. He expands on this in John 16, 34, 33. He says, I have told you these things. So that in me, Jesus says, you might have peace. Isaiah 9, 6 tells us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Peace does not come from going to a special place like the beach. <laughs> peace comes from knowing a special person. Yes. The Prince of Peace. I like how Stephen Curtis puts it. He says that peace has nothing to do with the absence of a catalyst of fear. Peace has nothing to do with the absence of a catalyst of fear. Instead, it has everything to do with the presence of Christ. Peace is not a clear doctor's report. Peace isn't when there's no conflict in your marriage. Peace is not absolute certainty about your future. It is the knowledge of the fact that Christ is with you, even if the report does come back cancer. Amen, those of you that have been through it. Peace is that Christ is with you, even in those moments when your marriage is having a few rocky areas. Peace is that Christ is with you presently, waiting for you in the future. And God brings us his peace, not when we uh, are everything going hunky-dory and great, but when we are most frightened. That's when God brings to us his perfect peace, most abundantly. And you know something that peace is produced by the Spirit? It's not something that we can manufacture. You can't fake it because peace flows out of that relationship with Christ. True, lasting peace flows out of a relationship with Christ. Peace is a fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. peace. Peace is produced by scriptures. If you want peace, then we need to fill our minds with the Word of God. I've shared with you before that dirty jar of water that can only be filled with golden nuggets. We have all kinds of junk in our lives, dirty water. But those golden nuggets of God's word will displace that dirty water. Eventually, not only those golden nuggets, but the golden sand will displace almost all of that dirty water. But can only be done so by nuggets from God's word, by golden nuggets from his word. God wants to bless us. But so often he does so in surprising ways. Give him this morning your worries, your fears, your concerns, those things that keep you up at night, and ask Jehovah, Jehovah, to give you peace, peace, that comes from Him because it's perfect. A year and a half ago, I sang a song in our Christmas cantata by Laura Story called Blessings. I liked it because it reminds me of another song that says, Sometimes God calms the storm, and sometimes God calms His child. And Laura wrote this song because she was, her husband was going through some health issues and she wasn't sure that God was hearing her prayers. And she finally learned that sometimes blessings come through tears and peace comes from a thousand sleepless nights. And she says, we pray for blessings. We pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing. For prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while, you hear each spoken need. Yet you love us way too much to give us lesser things. 
It's what if your raindrops do come? Or what if your blessings do come to raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know that you're near? What if trials of this life are your mercies and disguises? Whatever it is that you need here this morning, whether you're here under this pavilion or whether you are online, God wants to bring you His shalom, shalom, peace, peace, perfect peace. Stay glued to Him. Imagine Him with you 24-7 and rest upon His promises as you trust in Him. Let's pray. Father, we thank You this morning for that peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Lord, I pray this morning as we go out from here that if any of us here or any listening online just have not had a sense of Your Lord, I pray that you will grant them this morning the ability to be able to look to you for whatever reason it is. And Lord, I pray that as they trust you, that you will grant to them your perfect peace. And we'll thank you and praise you for it. Christian your name we pray. Amen. Our closing song, uh, one of your favorites, I'm sure it's one of mine as well. It is indeed well with my soul, no matter what's going on in life, it is indeed well with my soul. When peace like a river
say, okay, God, by an act of my will, I will give it to you. I will trust you. I will not say that you cannot handle it. I trust you. Because he wants to grant and give you his perfect peace. It is well.